A vast body of water stretches before you, cold, violent, and unpredictable. This is the Cook Strait, a narrow stretch of ocean separating New Zealand's North and South Islands. Though just 22 kilometers wide at its narrowest point, it's one of the most treacherous waterways on Earth. There is no bridge, no tunnel, only ferries and flights. But now, that might be about to change. New Zealand is exploring the idea of building a fixed connection between its islands, a massive billion-dollar megaproject, part bridge, part tunnel, and entirely unprecedented. It would span one of the roughest straits on the planet and challenge every limit of engineering this country has ever known. But is this bold vision the future of New Zealand or an impossible dream? Thousands of years ago, before humans set foot on these islands, Cook Strait didn't even exist. Sea levels were lower. A landmass known as Alandia connected what we now call the North and South Islands. It was all one continent-sized fragment slowly drifting away from Australia. But the oceans rose, Zealandia sank, and around 14,000 years ago, the two islands were permanently divided by rising seas and roaring currents. Then came Maori explorers, navigating Waka between the islands with astonishing skill. Later, European colonists mapped the strait, often at great cost. Even today, crossing the Cook Strait isn't easy. It's one of the roughest stretches of sea in the world, and it still forms a deep psychological divide between Te Ika Maui and Te Waiponamu, between the busy, bustling north and the wilder, colder south. Today, the two islands are joined by ferry and flight. The inter-islander ferry runs daily, taking over three hours to cross. Delays are common, weather disruptions even more so. Cargo waits on the docks, people queue, time is lost. So the dream has lingered. What if we connected the islands once and for all? There are two ways to do it. Option one, the bridge. A surface connection would likely begin around Cape Teruaiti, west of Wellington. From there, it would leap across the strait, aiming for the South Island near Clifford Bay or Picton. It wouldn't be one long span. Instead, it would be a chain of long span bridges, elevated roadways, and potentially man-made islands acting as anchors and rest points. The challenge is scale. The Hong kong zhuhai macau Bridge, the world's longest sea crossing, stretches 55 kilometers. A Cook Strait Bridge could be even longer, up to 60 or 70 kilometers depending on the route. Winds would batter it, waves would pound its pillars. It would need to survive earthquakes, salt corrosion, and the raw force of two oceans colliding. Imagine driving across that, through howling gusts with nothing but water on either side for hours. Not for the faint-hearted. Option 2 the tunnel. Then there's the underground option, a tunnel from Wellington to the Marlborough region. It could carry passenger and freight trains or even car shuttle services like the Channel Tunnel between the UK and France. There's also a more futuristic idea, a submerged floating tunnel anchored to the seabed, drifting just below the surface. It would avoid earthquakes and surface storms, but introduce new risks, structural integrity, deep sea pressure and shipping lane collisions. Either way, we're talking about a 50 to 100 billion dollar megaproject, pushing the limits of engineering. Let's talk about what makes this so hard. 1. The Ocean Cook Strait is shallow, but that's actually worse. Shallow water means taller waves, and with no landmass shielding it from either side, winds race through at terrifying speeds. Swells can reach 10 meters, currents tear in opposite directions, and storms can form within hours. Any bridge would need wind breaks, deep anchors, and flexible expansion joints just to stay intact. A tunnel would need waterproofing and emergency safety systems on a scale never before attempted in New Zealand. 2. Geology New Zealand straddles the Pacific and Australian tectonic plates. The Wairarapa Fault, just outside Wellington, is capable of a magnitude 8 earthquake. The Kaikoura quake in 2016 devastated transport lines far from the strait. An undersea structure would need to flex, twist, and absorb shocks from both land and sea. Engineers could design for that, but at astronomical cost. 3. Cost and complexity The Channel Tunnel costs $15 billion in today's money for 50 kilometers. A Cook Strait link? Double the risk, triple the engineering, and likely 5 to 10 times the cost. We're talking decades of construction thousands of workers, and a full overhaul of transport infrastructure on both sides just to support it. Wellington would need new roads and rail hubs. 
Blenheim or Picton would need to become logistical megacenters. Environmental permits would take years to approve, if ever. And then there's maintenance. Bridges that long need constant inspection. Tunnels need emergency exits, ventilation shafts, and fireproof materials. This wouldn't be just a project. It would be a permanent national undertaking. Despite all that, there's real interest. Supporters argue it could revolutionize transport. Freight would move seamlessly between the islands. No ferries, no offloading, no port delays. Farmers in the South Island could ship meat, wine, and produce to Auckland faster than ever. Tourism would explode. Visitors could drive from Rotorua to Queenstown in a single road trip. It would be a nation-building project, a legacy for future generations, something that says New Zealand thinks big. It might also reduce emissions by cutting flights and ferry diesel use. And then there's resilience. In a disaster, a fixed link could allow emergency supplies and evacuation routes between islands. The case against the link. Critics say, nice idea, but totally impractical. New Zealand's population is small. The entire country has 5 million people. That's barely the size of Sydney. Is there really enough demand to justify a $100 billion bridge? Right now, ferries and planes work well. They're being upgraded, they're flexible, and they don't come with a century of maintenance costs. Then there's the environmental risk. Cook Strait is home to blue whales, humpbacks, dolphins, and seabirds. The seabed is a fragile ecosystem. Pounding pylons into it or digging beneath it could alter currents, harm breeding grounds, and disrupt migratory patterns. Finally, there's culture. The seabed and surrounding coastline hold deep significance to Maori iwi. Any construction would require not just legal approval, but genuine partnership and katia katanga, guardianship of the land and sea. So, is it happening? As of 2025, no. There are no funded proposals, no feasibility studies, no engineering consortia ready to break ground. The closest thing is the Marinas Link, an undersea power cable between Tasmania and mainland Australia. New Zealand's priorities remain elsewhere – housing, healthcare, climate resilience. But the idea lives on – in student theses, in civil engineering debates, in late-night Reddit threads where Kiwis imagine a future where Auckland and Christchurch are just a day's drive apart. Maybe one day. From afar, the vision is breathtaking. A silver line arching over the sea. A steel tunnel burrowing beneath the waves. A united Aotearoa. But between the dream and reality lies the wild sea and everything it represents. Danger, distance, disagreement, and a whole lot of money. To build this bridge, New Zealand would have to do something it's never done before. Think bigger than earthquakes, than whales, than fairy timetables. And maybe, just maybe, that's exactly what's needed. But until that day comes, the Cook Strait remains what it's always been. A beautiful, brutal, impossible crossing. And a challenge waiting to be conquered. Want more? Click here to explore the proposed Bass Strait Bridge between Tasmania and Australia. And subscribe, or next time you're on the ferry, the sea gods might decide you're not worthy.